His grace. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. And truth be told, Lord, we realize it wasn't because of our goodness. It wasn't because we've kept all of your commandments, but the only reason that we woke up this morning was because of your amazing gift called grace. So, Lord, we didn't come here for no form of fashion. We came to lift up holy hands. We came to lift you up higher. We came to encourage one another. We came to magnify you. We came to help each other out. We came to tell somebody to hold on. Help is on the way. Lord, you promised us that if we would lift you up, that you would draw. And you promised us that if we get to your presence, that we'd find everything we need. So help us, Lord, even on today, Lord, just to have a little bit more strength, a little bit more fortitude to get into your presence. And Lord, when we get there, let us just dwell there until everything gets all right. Lord, give me a double portion of your preaching power. Give your people listening ears. And Lord, if there be any glory in anything that we do today, keep it all for yourself. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come to Reverend Moore and to the officers and members of this great church, to my own chairman of my deacon ministry, Deacon Williams, who's here with us, to my youth pastor, Pastor Cameron LeBron, to my wife and my son, and to the members of New Hope who are here with us. Uh, I'm happy to be here, amen? Amen. Didn't know where I was going to be at this moment. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was going to be at Pilgrim, and then they called and said, well, there's been a change. And I said, well, God knows better than we know. Amen. 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 And so I'm happy to be here on this morning. Uh, so happy my wife and my son is here, uh, my youngest son. And so won't you all stand up? My wife, Jackie, is back there in the back, and my son, Cameron. Amen. We praise God for Both of them are shy and non-traditional, so they're going to be real mad. Amen. Me having them stand up. Amen. Amen. Hey, man, if you don't mind, stand with me. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 26. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 26. Starting at verse 1 and reading through verse 7, there you find these words recorded. And there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, of to Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not it down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of, and sojourn in the land, and I will be with thee, and bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed. And I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham their father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of that place asked him and his wife, and he said, She is my sister, for he faced he feared to say, she is my wife, least, said he, the men of the place would kill him for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. If you don't mind, I want to preach from this thought, a need to know basis. A need to know basis. There are three things I want to share with you before I take my seat. First, let me tell you, don't follow the crowd. Secondly, let me tell you, don't follow tradition. And finally, let me tell you, now move. If you don't mind, you can talk back with me. Amen. You won't make me nervous if you talk back. Amen. I'll feel like I'm at home. Is that all right? Amen. I'm going to try to ease into this thing. I'm going to try to ease into this thing. When, when we look at the text, we find this ironic situation in which the writer tells us simply that God looks at Isaac and he gives him some directions that does not seem to be the normal directions. Uh, every time in our life, from time to time, we find ourselves at the crossroads of life in which God comes and he tells us, do something different. 
Have you ever looked around? Have you ever looked around and everybody in the crowd is going this way? And the Lord looks at you and says, do not follow the crowd. In fact, Lord, deliver us from members that want to be like everybody else in the city. Deliver us from members that want to act like everybody else. Deliver us from members that want to pray like everybody else, preach like everybody else, praise like everybody else, sing like everybody else. Deliver us from folk who are so caught up in the crowd that they don't understand that you actually identify with a unique praise is there anybody in here that understands that when God is moving you ought to do something to get his attention you ought to do something to let God know it is me who is in the need of prayer not the person next to me not the person on my pew but it's me and so the first thing I want to tell you is stop following the crowd have your own identity, have your own self-worth, have your own view of yourself that you realize everybody in the crowd ain't going the right way. Everybody in the crowd doesn't have your best interest. Everybody in the crowd is not following Christ. And if you find yourself following the crowd, you might end up in hell one day only to look around and see the same crowd you followed is in hell with you. Don't follow the crowd. Don't follow the crowd. And then you got to look at this now. Look, 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 at, look at this. Everyone is going down to Egypt. So God tells Isaac, he says, listen, don't go to Egypt. Don't, don't, don't follow the crowd. In fact, don't even follow everybody else. I'm going to send you to a place that I'm going to show you. And I need you to be sensitive enough to hear my voice and move when I tell you to move. Second thing, not only do you not follow the crowd, but don't follow tradition. Story goes this way, that there was a woman who was baking a ham, and she got the ham out the package, seasoned it up, and then cut the edge of the ham off, put it in the pan, put it in the oven, and cooked the pan. Generations go by, and now the granddaughter is cooking a ham. She seasoned the ham up, and she's trying to teach her daughter how to cook. So her daughter's right there at the counter watching mama do all these things. She seasoned the ham, and then she got ready to put the ham in the pan, stopped, cut off the edge of the ham, then put it in the pan. The daughter stops mom and says, why do you cut off the edge of the ham? The mother said, I don't know. It's what my grandmother did. It must be something to help the taste of the ham. So we cut off the edge of the ham. She called her grandmother, who was still alive, and said, big mama, why is it that we cut off the edge of the ham before we could. And Big Mama said, baby, I cut the edge of the ham off because the ham was bigger than the pan. How many times have we been guilty in following something and not understanding why we do it? And we need to understand, if it does not bring glory to God, we need to stop doing some stuff. Maybe I'm in here by myself. Maybe... I'm in here by myself, but sometimes we have some traditions of futility. It ain't bringing no glory. It ain't helping nobody out. It ain't saving nobody. It ain't delivering nobody, but we still do it Sunday after Sunday, Saturday after Saturday, Wednesday after Wednesday. Every once in a while, we ought to do an inventory. Is anybody glorified? Is anybody changed? Has God been lifted up? If the answer is no, then you can do it if you want to, but don't make it mandatory. You got to be careful because tradition will have you hurting folk that God sent for you to help. Tradition will have you taking out your ruler, measuring everybody's skirts that walk up in here. Ah, you can't, you can't worship with that short skirt on. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't worship, brother, unless you got on a three-piece suit. Don't you, don't you come up in here and you ain't got no tie on. Don't, don't, don't you come up in here and you got on your blue jeans. Don't you come up in here and you got on your tennis shoes. But how many of you know that Pookie, Ray Ray, and, and June Bug, and Bit Bit, they come from the street. And in the street, they ain't got all the stuff that we got in the church. And if we ever realize what God has called us to do, then we would understand that when Pookie and Ray Ray and Bit Bit come to the church, they going to come dressed just as they are. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, y'all quiet up in here, man. Uh -huh. Y'all ready for me to go home already? Yeah. We got to not follow tradition. We 
In fact, you ought to be so saved <laughs> that a short skirt don't even make you look. Uh, well, my brothers, uh, y'all better holler back at me. You, you ought to be so, so, so focused on lifting up the Lord uh, that you didn't even notice a short skirt. Uh, why? Because I didn't come here to look at you anyhow. I came to lift the Lord up high in the sanctuary. And it doesn't matter what you got on. Help me lift up Jesus. Uh, in fact, let me help some of y'all out. Some of y'all have been sending angels away from here unaware. Pulling out your ruler, measuring skirts. And I hate to get up to heaven only to find out I don't qualify because of all the other folks I disqualified. Oh, come on back. I didn't want to leave you out there. Huh? Don't you praise God every Sunday. Don't you be here every Sunday, every Wednesday, and find out that when you get to heaven, you're disqualified because you've been hurting everybody along the way. The Bible does talk about workers of iniquity. What does that mean? I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was trying to save the Lord. But what I didn't understand is God said, whosoever will, let him come. And the who's, I'm starting to feel good now. The, the whosoever will don't look like us. They don't act like us. They don't talk like us. In fact, the whosoever will has been sent here to help us. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. The whosoever will is being sent here to help us. Why? Because some of us been saved so long we forgot what it was like being unsaved. Come on and stay with me. Some of y'all been up in here so long huh, that you forgot your first child ain't by your husband. Huh? Some of us been here so long huh, that we forgot we used to get drunk, get high. We used to run. We used to do everything else. And don't you ever forget, at least you go back and be tripped back up. All of us up in here got somebody that if they walk up in here, we lean down. Huh? All of us in here got that that light went on. Huh. Huh. Some, some of us got that light on. We find us at the casino. Maybe y'all don't have that in Nebraska. Maybe that's just a Kansas thing. I, I know some of my members, they, 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 they love to shout to make me finish my sermon early because the buffet at the casino started at 1 o'clock. I ain't crazy. It's a 30-minute drive to the casino. Huh. Everybody say amen. I ain't saying amen for the right reason. Some of them say amen, Reverend. Get done. Why? I got to get to the... They got crab legs at the casino. But I seen them not only at the crab leg store, but they also up in that... Reverend on the side of that machine. Got rabbit foots in their pocket. Lucky charms everywhere. But they want to come to church and keep everybody else out of the church. Yet they still got their own issues. And what I've learned is this. The one who's guarding the church most got the most issues they hiding. So you better understand that all of us in here have come short of the glory of God. But the good news is grace and mercy found me before it was too late. And I ought to praise God. Why? Because of grace and mercy. But by the grace of God... There go I. Uh, um. Y'all still here? So don't, don't follow tradition. It was traditional for folk to run to where the food was. It was traditional to run to the city when there was a famine. It was tradition to run where there was a metropolitan area. But the Lord says, I don't want you to be traditional. Don't run to the city. In fact, let me go ahead and throw this in here. It wasn't in my notes, but I'm going to put this in here for free. God will tell you what to do by telling you what not to do. Uh, is there anybody here know what I'm talking about here? He'll tell you what not to do, where not to go, what not to say, and that'll give you license to say and do and go the right places. Uh, but sometimes, church, we are so nosy. Amen. I'm talking to a couple of y'all that got that nosy problem. Amen. As soon as the bus pulled up, y'all want to know who we were, where we were from, what was our purpose. I want to talk to some of y'all nosy folk that you always out on your porch looking at what's going on down the street. I need to talk to some of you nosy folk that you know everything about everybody else. 
You know everybody else's business. You know who is with who and who used to be with who. I need to talk to you nosy folk. And here's what I found about nosy folk. Nosy folk who are nosy with you are also nosy with God. Lord, what you doing in their business? What you doing in their life? And I've got to a place where I want to be ignorant enough, which ignorance means lack of knowledge. I want to be ignorant enough that I don't need to be nosy no more. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, just don't do it without me. I don't have to know all your business, Lord. I ain't got to know who all you healing. I ain't got to know who all you delivering. All I'm going to ask, Lord, is whatever you're doing, just use me in your service. I, I don't want to know everything, Lord. I don't want to know everybody. I just want to know, can you use me one more day? Why? Because I realized that somebody had to be used to give the word to me. And now I'm trying to play it forward. I'm trying to have everybody know a man named Jesus that can change everything in their is there anybody in here that understand we got a need to know basis? A need to know basis means that you need information when you need it and not beforehand. Need to know basis. Some of us want to know everything, every day, everybody. As a principal in a public school, I got 1,000 students. I've got 85 certified staff members. I got about 35 classified staff members. I got 15 folks in the cafeteria. I got 10 custodians. And every year we start the year, nosy folk show up in my office. What is this year going to be about? Nosy folk, nosy folk always know when we get a new student, they didn't already start gossiping. Shh, shh. I, I saw somebody in the office. They look bad. Look at their parents. They, they look, mm, mm, mm. And I thought it was just a school thing. I really did until I started hanging around churches. And then I found out church folks, same way. Soon as that sister got up and started coming down, somebody leaned over and said, mm. I hope she didn't come to join. As soon as that brother walked in with that female, first thing you said, mm, I know that ain't his woman. I need to know basis. We are supposed to be disciplined enough, spiritual enough, that we hear what God says, and then we move. And we do not run back to God and say, what's next? We move until we get the next word. But some of us are so scared of the unknown that we honestly believe either God lied to us when he started or he got confused in our journey. But we got to understand that God will complete the good work he has begun in us. In my in Bible country, God will. And so now all I need to know is when do I move? We were, we were traveling here, and uh, my kids, of course, are, are better with this uh, electronics than I am. I got an iPhone only because I had to. I, I had my BlackBerry for years, and that BlackBerry died. And I went to the Sprint store to get me a new BlackBerry, and they laughed at me. And I told them, y'all don't know me that well. Don't let Reverend fool y'all. I ain't been delivered from fighting yet. Y'all laughing at me again. It might be owning and popping up in here. I don't know y'all like that. And they said, Davis, they, we don't make no, we don't make no blackberries no more, man. We, you gotta, you gotta upgrade. And I said, upgrade. I, I was getting a new blackberry. That was an upgrade. They said, no, 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 no. That, that blackberry technology, mm -mm, we, we don't do that. You gotta get you an iPhone. I, I said, I, I, I don't know about no iPhone. They said, yeah, get your iPhone, man. You, you can have everything you need at your touch. And so they gave me an iPhone, and and I went home, and and and, and I was trying to work that iPhone, and and and. And let me tell y'all right now, that, that iPhone might be the devil. <laughs> that, that iPhone get me so confused. And so when we were coming here, the kid said, Davis, put the address in your phone. So I went, I said, do I have to go to Maps? They said, yeah, but I went to Maps, I hit Maps, I put the address in my phone, and I hit Directions. And, 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 and Directions came up. And they say, see, ain't you glad you got an iPhone? I, I said, no, because my Directions are from Wichita, Kansas. We, we in Nebraska. These ain't helping me. They said, well, don't you have your 
identification to identify where you are right now. And I said, no, that, 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 that let nosy people know where I am. I don't want everybody to know where I am all the time. Because if people know I'm in Nebraska, some folks won't go to church on Sunday. That may not happen here in Nebraska. But in Wichita, if I know pastor ain't going to be at church on Sunday, that's my Sunday to sleep in. And so I didn't have my location in there. And so we had to have one of the young men put it in there. He had location. It led us. And now here's the thing. It told us what highway to get on. And it did say nothing else told us where to go highway nothing else the driver thought he knew more than the so he got off too soon and then it spoke rerouting he said right we're gonna go left we went left it said rerouting he did a little u-turn went the other way it said rerouting Get on the highway. Once we got on the highway, it shut up again. <laughs> Y'all stay with me. And we kept going until it said, exit coming up 300 feet to the right. Now understand this. In our spiritual journey, God says, move. He doesn't say anything else as long as you're moving in the right direction. But the moment you get off, the Lord says, rerouting. Make a U-turn at the next legal spot and then go this direction. And God is so good that he knows where you are, knows how fast you're going. And if you just listen, God will get you to your destination. Some of y'all sitting here right now, and God is saying rerouting. The moment you start dating Fred, God said rerouting. But you so hell-bent on having Fred, you missing the fact that he said rerouting. You got to understand that even though I made a choice, when I hear rerouting, I can turn around and go the other direction. Why is it important to move? when he tells us to move because in the text he says to Isaac I'm going to show you a place when you get there I'll let you know you're in the right place it may not look like much but when you get there stay there start building there go and read the book for yourself when he got to the right land the Bible says that he started planting crops and even though there's a famine in the land, y'all better go read the text. Uh, his crops keeps coming in. Uh, he starts then raising animals. Uh, even though there's a famine in the land, uh, his animals start reproducing. Uh, in fact, he got so much wealth uh, that the folks got nervous uh, and said, man, you got to go somewhere. Uh, and the word says uh, he went to a valley. Help me, somebody that was messed up, uh, and the Lord still blessed them. Uh, I need to talk to about five or six of you uh, that you were in a situation, uh, and everybody looking at you like you crazy. Uh, I stopped by here on my way to heaven to tell you, uh, God said you were in the right place uh, at the right time. Uh, keep doing what He told you to do, uh, whatever He is. Uh, God will bless your hands. God. God to bless your hands. In 96, I graduated from college, took a job outside of Chicago, enjoyed my time there, told my dad one day, hey, I'm going to Hutchinson, Kansas to teach in Hutchinson, Kansas, all white school district, and I'm going there to go teach and coach. And my dad said, boy, don't go back to Kansas. I said, what do you mean? He said, don't, don't, don't go back. That's a hell hole. Don't go back. Went back, was blessed, taught for three years, was a head basketball coach, track coach, football coach. Called my dad up and said, Dad, I'm going to go be an assistant principal in Wichita. He said, don't go to Wichita. Don't, don't, don't go, don't go to Wichita. Go to a big city. Go, go, go to a big city. I said, well, this is what the Lord said. So I went to Wichita. A year and a half after being in Wichita, uh, New Hope comes open. 
Hey man, I don't, I don't want to go to New Hope. I don't want to go to New Hope. I, I, I don't want to go to New Hope. I got my own plan. I got my own plan. God says you go going to New Hope. I said, Lord, you can't be sure about that. Uh, you, you, you know them better than I do. I'm not, I'm not going. I'm not going to New Hope. God says, yes, you're going to New Hope. I called my friends. My friends said, don't go to New Hope. I said, why? They said, just don't go to New Hope. Got to New Hope. God started blessing. God started moving. Uh, they came to me one day and said, we want you to be principal of Mayberry. My friend said, don't go to Mayberry. Went to Mayberry two years. They had the biggest turnaround in the whole state of Kansas academically. Two years later, they come to me and say, go to Stuckey. My friend said, don't go to Stuckey. I go to Stuckey. Six years later, we're the top school in the state. Next thing you know, they come to me and say, you got to go to Truesdale. I said, no, I am not. Go to Truesdale four years ago. Lowest performing school in the state of Kansas. Tuesday, we got the deputy commissioner of the whole state of Kansas coming to see how we turned it around. As long as I do what I want to do, I'll never get what God has for me. Can I help y'all? Can I help y'all? Can I help y'all? I ain't got no dog in this fight. I ain't got any y'all business. Listen, stop listening to everybody in the city tell you what to do about your pastoral search. I'll pat my own self on the back. You ain't got to say amen. Everybody ain't got your best interest at heart. Get on your face before the Lord. Ask God, what is it that you have for us? The word says, I'll send you pastors after my own heart. You're going to go ask everybody else. You're going to go seek everybody else. And what you're going to find out, they'll send who they want you to have who will send you straight to hell. But if you seek the Lord, God will send you who you're supposed to have who will lead you to a place you've never been before. Why? Because God said, I'll use you to show everybody else I am El Shaddai. I'm more than enough. I'll put food on a table, a roof over your head and I'll send the increase I'm so glad that 14 years ago New Hope didn't listen to everybody else in the city who was saying I was too young he too radical he gonna mess y'all up he ain't gonna quit his job he ain't even caring about y'all I'm so glad that they got on their face before the Lord. Now the same folk that said, Didn't, don't hire him, always sneaking, whispering in my ear. You ever think about coming over here? Kids say, back then you didn't want me, now I'm hopping you all up on me. Mother, y'all ask y'all grandkids what I just said. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, turn from their wicked, wicked ways, seek my face and pray, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. I don't do this everywhere I go, but I got something that God is telling me to tell y'all here at St. Mark. God says, I'm ready to heal Omaha. And I ain't worried about the big churches. I ain't worried about the loud churches. I ain't worried about the hip churches. I ain't worried about where the crowd is. I want some folk that's going to touch and agree that I'm God and God all by myself. I want some folk that ain't going to fight over crazy stuff, ain't going to roll their eyes over crazy stuff, but they really understand how to lift me up. And God said, that's who I want to use. I'll always use the last, the least, and the left out to do the impossible so that everybody else can't get credit. You got to look to the heaven and say, look at God. Won't God do it? Won't he turn it around? Won't he make a way out of no way? You've got to understand you are in the right place. When everybody else is talking about you, that's when you know you're in the right place. 
When everybody else is writing you off, that's when you know you're at the right place. When everybody's saying, they don't know what they're doing. Da, 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 da. That's when you know you're at the right place. All right. All right. Oh, I need to talk to some folk that's going to receive this Isaac blessing. And say, you know what, this is a need to no basis. Now, as a member, listen, you ain't going to know everything the pulpit committee going to do. It's a need to no basis. If you pray right up front, God will work the process right on the backside. Stay with me. Stay with me. Huh? Don't be putting your cousin on the committee because it's your cousin. He ain't even saved, ain't tithing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Find out who the Lord wants. <laughs> Y'all still with me? If they ain't tithing, why are you going to put them on the committee? They ain't even blessed. Uh, uh, y all, y all, y all. In fact, if they ain't on the committee, if they on the committee, y'all look at their Bible. If they Bible ain't got no wear and tear, don't put them on the committee. A pretty Bible means they ain't opening it. Ain't got, ain't got no creases in your Bible? And I know our brothers are. They always talk about, well, I got it on my phone. Okay, go to their history. If you don't see no scriptures in their history, don't put them on the committee. Get some folk who are thirsty for the Lord to represent you in this process. And then as a member, you pray. Lord, use them to hear from you, to receive the angel you have here. And when the process is over, whether you vote for them or whether you don't, listen to this, steal your pastor. Steal yours. Steal yours. May not have voted for him, but guess what? He steal mine. Got to watch out for my soul. He's got to pray for me. He's got to stand in the gap for me. And I'd hate for somebody to stand in the gap who I'm making mad every day. None of you would go in for eye surgery and slap the doctor who's going to perform the surgery. You get united first. Some of y'all ain't talked to each other in 15 years. Don't you bring no pastor in that mess. Some of y'all ruling your eyes at each other right now. Don't y'all bring no pass in that mess. Be reconciled as a family first. I wish y'all read that text with me. Listen, God spoke to Isaac and the whole family went with Isaac. And the blessing followed when they left and got there where they were supposed to go. Wife would have been crazy not to go. Kids would have been crazy not to go. But because they were obedient to God's word and when where God told them to go, God blessed them beyond belief. How many of you want to see God's glory like never before? How many of you really want to be with God with whatever he's doing in this season? How many of you really want to be used by God with whatever he's doing in this season? If that's your heart's desire, if that's your heart's mantra, if that's how you really feel, listen, do me a favor. I need you to meet me down here at the altar. Meet me down here. Don't you wait on nobody else. Don't you wait on the crowd. If the Lord is telling you right now, I'm ready to move to a new level. I'm ready to be used in this season. I know God did great things 20 years ago, 30 years ago, but in this season, I want to be used by him in this season. <laughs> Find somebody. It ain't about friendship. It ain't about friendship. Find somebody you can touch and agree with. Find somebody you can touch and agree with. Find somebody that can touch and agree with. God says, that, I'll be in the midst if you touch and agree. I'll be there where you are. And the great thing about it, God said, I inhabit the praises of my people, which means I will go in and I'll sit down where they're at. How many of you know that if God will sit down in my presence, 
Everything's going to be all right. If God will sit down in my prayer life, it'll be all right. If God will sit down in my efforts. <laughs> Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to speak the blessing on this house. I come to speak the blessing on this house that you're bringing them to a place. Some of them have been in mourning since January. Some of them have been confused since January. Some of them have been struggling since January. But this morning, I came to bring crystal clarity that you're still on the throne. You're still in the blessing business, and you're still giving out directions. Somebody's receiving a word right now. That weeping may endure for a night, but joy, huh? Okay, joy comes. And Lord, somebody here is struggling because what happens if I move forward? Does it mean I've forgotten pastor? And the word is no. He ran his race. He finished his assignments. And God called him home. After finishing his assignment. But he left the family here. To carry on. Ha, the lessons that were taught. He left the family here. To carry on the ministry. He left the family here. And Lord right now I speak to every heart right here. No schisms. <laughs> no issues. No division in the name of Jesus. Whatever the issue is, we're going to let it go. Whatever the, 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 the conflict is, we're going to let it go in the name of Jesus. Huh? Whatever it was, Lord, we're going to let it go. Why? Because we can't go afresh holding on to old stuff. Unite them. Unite them. Mighty family. Loving family. Wonderful family. And Lord, what I'm so glad about is that you're looking in the world trying to find yourself. And whenever you find yourself, I'm so glad you come to where you are. Come right here. Hungry for you, thirsty for you. God chase us. God chase us. Whoever you want to send here, they're going to receive. God chase us. Oh, it doesn't matter the economic background of the family. God chase us. Doesn't matter the sin of the person, God chases. Doesn't matter the mess they come out of, God chases. And when they get here, they're going to find a family with their arms open, loving them, holding them. Thank you. And I speak the blessing of Isaac that you bless everything they do, multiply them. In Jesus' name, spread them. In Jesus' name, more gifts, more glory, more joy, more happiness. In Jesus' name, praying harder, praising harder. In Jesus' name, singing till the glory comes down. And Lord, not only are we going to shout when we see the manifestation, but we're going to shout now that we receive it. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. We believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord, that you will do exceedingly, abundantly, Above and beyond all that we can ask for. <laughs> in your glory. In your glory. In your glory. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. We want to feel your glory. We want to see your glory. Show us your glory. Sunday after Sunday, show us your glory. Week in, week out, show us your glory. Hey. 
that the inhabitants of the city saw the blessing on Isaac's family. The inhabitants of the city, the naysayers, the haters, the nosy folk, they saw the blessing on the house. I proclaim the blessing on this house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Use them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Use them to change the city. Thank you, Lord. Use them to change the neighborhood. Thank you, Lord. Use them to change families. Thank you. Pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, while you're down here, just love on each other. That's what's being in the family about. Just love on each other. Love on each other. Prophesy to each other. It's going to get better. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir.